Welcome back guys to another episode of Answers from the Tool Room. Today we're going over a highly requested video from a lot of our customers about how to actually fly cut uh, your CNC machine properly. All right, so today, like I said, we're going over fly cutting. As you can see on our scoreboard here, we have a lot of cuts that we made from previous programs. So we're gonna go over the how, the when, and the why to fly cut your CNC bed. All right, so the first question is, why did we fly cut our scoreboard? Our MDF that we use here, your vacuum actually sucks through the MDF. And as you cut through using your compression bits, uh, you're gonna create channels in your actual MDF. Uh, when you have parts on top of this, the vacuum through these channels will be allowed to escape out and not hold your part efficiently. Uh, so when we fly cut, we surface our spool board completely and allows us to get a maximum holding on our actual pieces. Uh, so the second question we're going to go over is when to actually fly cut your spool board. Uh, generally speaking, it is dependent on your individual conditions that you have in your shop, how many sheets you run, your climate, things like that. But we're going to go over so the general rules for fly cutting, uh, generally speaking, you always want to do it in the morning time. You want to leave the machine, let it settle for the night before, any temperature changes that happen, whether it shrinks or swells throughout the night, let that go on and then you can fly cut in the morning to get you a nice fresh Z level to work with. Also, if you're running a lot of small parts, a lot of guys run drawer fronts or things like that. And if you have a lot of cuts like we have here on our spool board, when you go to run a, a group of small pieces, you, you increase the risk of those pieces actually moving if you do not have uh, a properly surfaced scoreboard. All right, so guys, now we're at the how section of actually how to fly cut your machine. Uh, we want to start here in Work Center. What you guys are looking at here is a Campus 7 machine. It may look a little bit different if you're on a Campus 5 or 6 machine, uh, but we will include screenshots of where to change different settings uh, for the applicable software. Uh, but the first thing we want to do here is change our Z level. Right now we're sitting at 18 millimeters. Whether you're in inches or metric doesn't really matter. You're still going to be changing them in the same location. So we're going to click on our Z level down here and we're going to bring up our left and right side. So this is where we're going to drop our spool board to the thickness that we're going to cut down to. It's Right now we're currently at 18, so I'm going to drop it to 17.8 millimeters. So I'm taking off 0.2. You shouldn't really have to go much deeper than that. If you are noticing cuts that are deeper, then you may want to check out your Z calibration and your tools to make sure you're not cutting too deep into your scoreboard. But once we have that change, we hit OK. And then we're going to notice that our new thickness will come into our Z level down here. From that point, you need to go and find your fly cut program. Now, depending on where you have this stored in your library, we have it here on the root directory. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab that guy. So fly cut five by 10, I'm going to brag it over. I don't need to do anything else here. I already have it set up. So I'm going to leave this here and I'm going to type in my password. Now, for security purposes, I'm not going to give that password out on this video. You guys should either have the numerical password with the four digits or you'll have the seven letter all capital password that's included. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in now. And once you either get the little unlock icon or you'll get the guy with the suit, or if you're on campus seven, you'll get the, the key in the top right corner. Once you have that, we're gonna go over to our table page. Now for you guys, you're gonna hit F9 to go to our hand operated functions, navigate to our table tab, and then you're gonna see these, uh, this screen here. Now, depending on your options, whether you have a push machine, where you have an end feed with a scissor lift or a roller belt, you will have different buttons at the top. We're not worried about those right now. Uh, we're gonna focus on this button here in the bottom left corner. Now this is your scoreboard mode button, and this will allow us to disable our vacuum sensor so we can suck down our scoreboard and run our fly cut without material on top. Now, like I said, with your password, you have to have that in to activate this button. So what we want to do is click that and turn it green. Now, if you hit reset, or if you deactivate the table, if you have it already active, then that button will turn off. So when you guys are doing this, make sure your button is green before you go walk up to the machine and turn on your vacuum. 
So we're turning that guy on. And then our next step for you guys with the automation options, i.e. the in feed and out feed, we want to turn off our main buttons at the top. So if you have if you have your loading on or you have your discharge on, we want to turn those two buttons off because we're obviously not going to be loading anything on the table. We're also not going to be pushing anything off. We're just cutting our scoreboard, so we don't want those to activate at all. And at this point, we are now ready to activate our table and go actually start our fly cut. So in this case, I'm going to come here. I'm going to activate my zone. For this guy, it's going to be F5. Uh, depending on if you have multiple zones, you either have four and five here, but we're going to activate for that. It should turn blue. Also, your pin should come up on your actual machine. Now at this point, we're going to go over and actually vacuum down our scoreboard. All right, so now we're at our actual machine and we're getting ready to actually fly cut the machine. So the first thing you want to do, if you have one of the newer style conveyors, you want to make sure that your transition piece is below the surface of your scoreboard. And you can take your eight millimeter Allen key uh, and we'll put it in here and we'll turn it counterclockwise to lower our conveyor table out of the way. Like I said, you don't want to be at the top of your scoreboard because you can run into it with your fly cutter. So we want to make sure that's down first. And then as we look at the bed of our machine, we want to make sure that we don't actually have any material up here. Uh, the fly cutter is designed to surface off a small amount of material from the scoreboard. It's not designed to cut through a three quarter piece of melamine that you left on your table. So please make sure your uh, scoreboard is completely clear. Uh, your transition piece is down. And then from there, we're going to vacuum down our machine. Now this is going to get a little bit loud, but I will talk through it a little bit. So once we have it vacuumed down, because we are bypassing our vacuum sensor, we want to make sure that our scoreboard is actually sucked down all the way. So in this case, I had that little front lip up. I push down and I make sure that I have a nice seal on my scoreboard. I don't want to run it with the corner up or something hanging up because now my flocker is going to come in and cut that and I'm going to have an issue on the machine. So you always want to verify that you have a good seal uh, on your scoreboard before you run your fly cut program. Now at this point, now I can hop out of my safety area, clear it out with the one tuck for your safety and then start the program. So now we're back over here. We got our vacuum uh, activated. We got our scoreboard sucked down. We cleared, make sure everything was good. So I'm going to reset my safety area and now I'm going to get my flashing green lights and I can actually start my program. So now we are done with our flat cut on our machine. We got a nice smooth scoreboard uh, to run our next material. The next thing you want to do once you are done fly cutting is you want to make sure you bring your transition piece back up to where you had it. If you do not have that option, then don't worry about it. But you also want to turn on your in feed and out feed options on your table page that you had on previously. Uh, if you guys like what you saw here in this video today, go ahead and hit, hit that like button, hit subscribe to our channel, and go ahead and write in the comments if you have any suggestions for videos you want to see, whether it's instruction videos or you just want to see something about any of our machines that we offer. Thank you.